it feels like the buzz around AI in finance just keeps getting louder, especially in how it's changing quantitative investment. Definitely, it's moving fast. So today we're doing a deep dive for you into a really specific, fascinating area, how cutting edge AI, like deep learning and these large language models, LLMs, are being used to chase alpha. Right, trying to find those returns that actually beat the overall market. We've looked at some research exploring this. Yeah, we want to get into the nitty gritty of how these AI-powered alpha strategies work. What's the theory? What results are people actually seeing? And crucially, what are the potential downsides? We need to look at those limitations too. Absolutely, always important. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Okay, so maybe let's start with alpha strategy itself. Just briefly, what's the core idea? Sure. Simply put, it's about trying to do better than the market benchmarks, finding inefficiencies, maybe mispricings, and exploiting them. Spouting an opportunity the market hasn't quite caught onto yet. Exactly. Now, a full strategy also involves hedging, managing risk, but today we're really zeroing in on the alpha side. The prediction part. The engine generating those excess returns. That's the one. So traditionally, how did quants tackle this? What was the typical process, the pipeline? Well, there's usually a kind of standard flow. You start with data processing, lots of data. That makes sense. Then you build models for prediction. After that, portfolio optimization, how do you actually allocate based on the predictions? And finally, getting the trades done. Right. Order execution, putting the plan into action. And AI specifically deep learning. Where did that start fitting in? Well, deep learning is really good at finding complex, subtle patterns in massive data sets, you know. Better than older statistical methods, presumably. Often, yes. It started enhancing each stage of that pipeline, better data analysis, more sophisticated prediction models, and so on. And now we have LLM stepping onto the stage. How are they changing the game? LLMs add this whole other dimension because they understand language, not just numbers. So they can process news, reports, social media. Bringing in unstructured data. Exactly, which yeah. opens up possibilities beyond just prediction, maybe even towards more fully AI automated investment down the line. It's still early days, but that's the potential. Okay, let's dig into that deep learning part first then, the alpha pipeline. Starting with data processing, what kind of data are we talking about? Oh, all sorts. Raw data, like numerical, quote, data candlestick charts, order books, or company fundamental data. The classic stuff. Right. But also relational data, like how companies or sectors are connected, think graphs. And then there's alternative data, like text, images. News, satellite images, things like that. Precisely. And even simulation data, which mm -hmm. is generated to test strategies. Deep learning can potentially work with all of these. But you don't just feed raw data straight in usually. You need features or factors. That's generally right. You derive these factors from the raw data. It's called factor mining or feature engineering, basically finding the signals that predict returns. How does deep learning help there? A couple of ways. Things like genetic programming can automatically discover sort of mathematical formulas for factors, symbolic factors. So you can kind of see the logic. Yeah, they're more interpretable. But then you also have techniques like encoder decoders that learn complex machine learning factors directly from the data. Less interpretable, maybe but potentially more powerful. That's the trade-off, exactly. Flexibility versus interpretability, though some advanced deep learning models are starting to work directly from raw data end to end. Interesting, okay, so data's prepped, factors are mined. Now model prediction. What's the theory behind how deep learning models predict asset returns? At its core, it's about modeling relationships in the data. So you have temporal correlations patterns over time, like trends or momentum. Like using CNNs or RNNs, those kinds of models. Exactly, or transformers or combinations like CNN LSTMs. They're designed to capture those sequential patterns. And what about relationships between assets? 
Right, the spatial correlations, how stocks or sectors influence each other. You can model that implicitly using things like self-attention mechanisms within transformers. Letting the model figure out the connections? Kind of, yeah. Or you can model it explicitly using graph neural networks, GNNs, where you actually define the relationships. You can even use hypergraphs for more complex many-to-many -many connections. And these relationships aren't static. Right. They change. Precisely. So you also need to model spatiotemporal interactions, how individual assets evolve and how their relationships change over time. There are different ways to try and combine the spatial and temporal modeling. Sounds complex. How do you actually train these models? What are they trying to predict or optimize? Well, there are two main paths. One is predicting intermediate targets. Like, will the price go up or down tomorrow? Yeah. Or ranking stocks based on expected performance. It's simpler, easier to train. But maybe not perfectly aligned with making money. That's the potential issue. Errors can accumulate, and just predicting direction doesn't guarantee a good portfolio strategy. So what's the alternative? End goal optimization. You train the model to directly optimize the final portfolio's performance maximizing return, or maybe the sharp ratio, which balances return and risk. That sounds much better aligned with the actual investment goal. It is, but it's also much more complex to implement. You need good simulation environments, and defining the objective precisely can be tricky. It's definitely an active research area. Got it. Okay, prediction done. Next is portfolio optimization, turning predictions into actual holdings. How does deep learning fit here? So traditional methods exist, like Markowitz's mean variance optimization. Deep learning can enhance those by, say, providing better forecasts of the inputs, future returns, risks, correlations. Improving the ingredients for the old recipe. Exactly. But the really interesting development is learning-based portfolio optimization, often using reinforcement learning, or RL. How does that work for portfolios? Instead of predicting returns first and then optimizing, you train an AI agent to directly learn the policy, the rules for allocating assets, by interacting with a simulated market. So it learns by doing, basically, trial and error trading. Kind of, yeah. It gets rewards based on the portfolio's performance, maybe just returns or risk-adjusted returns like Sharp, maybe factoring in transaction costs or even diversity to avoid putting all eggs in one basket. So it learns a holistic strategy through feedback. That's quite different. It is. It's an end-to-end -end approach to portfolio generation. Okay, last step in the pipeline. Order execution. Getting the trades done efficiently. AI's role here. Traditionally, you'd use mathematical models trying to figure out the best way to slice up a large order to minimize market impact the cost of moving the price against you. Balancing speed and cost. Right. But those models often rely on simplified assumptions about the market. Reinforcement learning offers another way. Well, again, RL seems popular. It's well suited for sequential decision making under uncertainty. Here, the RL agent learns an optimal execution strategy by observing the market state, like the order book, and its own actions impact, trying to minimize execution costs. Learning the nuances of market microstructure through simulation. Essentially, yes. Using things like queue learning or policy gradient methods to figure out the best way to trade. Okay, that gives a good picture of deep learning across the quant pipeline. Now, let's shift gears to large language models, LLMs. How are they being used for alpha? Right. LLMs represent another step, potentially towards more automated quant research. They excel at understanding language and processing multimodal data. We can sort of categorize their roles as predictors and as agents. Okay, let's start with LLMs as predictors. One big area is using them for sentiment extraction from text data news, filings, social media. This builds on older text analysis techniques, I suppose. It does, but LLMs offer more sophisticated ways. You can use pre-trained financial LLMs like Finbert to build classifiers. Training a separate model using the LLM's understanding. Yes. Or, more recently, you can directly prompt powerful LLMs like GPT-4 to classify sentiment, sort of zero shot or few shot. Some studies show this has predictive power. So the LLM itself does the classification based on a prompt. Correct. And they can also help build representations of relationships between companies, like constructing financial graphs from text, which can then feed into prediction models. Interesting. What about using LLMs for direct forecasting, not just sentiment? That's a newer, perhaps more radical idea. Using LLMs primarily designed for text to forecast numerical time series like stock prices. How does that even work? Feeding numbers into a text model. 
Researchers are exploring ways to represent the numerical sequences, maybe as text strings, or using special reprogramming techniques to align the LLM's capabilities with forecasting tasks. It's called zero-shot forecasting, sometimes predicting without specific training on those numbers. Wow, does it work? Some initial studies, say on the NASDAQ Q100, using models like GPT-4, show promise, especially when combined with techniques like chain of thought prompting to get the LM to explain its forecast. There's also work using LLMs to analyze earnings calls and news for risk prediction. Fascinating, but sounds very experimental. Definitely still emerging. Okay, so that's LLMs as predictors. What about LLMs as agents? What does that mean? This is where the LLM doesn't just predict, but combines its reasoning abilities with tools like APIs to fetch data or execute code to act more autonomously in the investment process. Like a virtual quant analyst. Sort of. Mm -hmm. One application is using LLMs for direct factor generation. Frameworks like AlphaGPT involve a human interacting with an LLM to discover new alpha factors through dialogue. So the LLM suggests ideas or code for factors. Exactly. Or using an LLM like ChatGPT as a surrogate analyst to brainstorm factor ideas based on its vast knowledge, or even analyze financial statements to predict earnings. How would a full LLM-based agent system look? Conceptually, you could have an architecture with different agents. Maybe one LLM focuses on prediction, another on portfolio optimization, another on execution, all interacting. Like a mini AI-powered trading desk. That's the vision. Though current research is mostly focused on the prediction part. Frameworks like FinMem try to build agents with memory and decision engines. Others like FinAgent integrate multimodal data. And are these agents working together? That's the next step. People are exploring collaborative multi-agent systems like FinRobot or trading agents that simulate different roles within a trading firm. Some initial results show good performance in simulated environments. Okay, this sounds incredibly advanced, but also brings us back to the potential downsides we mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Let's revisit those for deep learning first. What are the key limitations? Well, as we touched on, overfitting is a big one. The model learns the training data too well, including the noise, and fails on new data. The classic machine learning problem. Absolutely. Then there's interpretability, or the lack thereof. These deep learning models can be black boxes, making it hard to understand why they make certain prediction, which is risky in finance. Hard to trust or manage risk if you don't know the logic. Precisely. And generating the data, especially complex simulation data like order flow, is computationally intensive and faces challenges in being realistic enough. So overfitting, interpretability, and data generation hurdles. What about the downsides specific to LLMs as predictors? For sentiment analysis, the linguistic sentiment an LLM picks up might not actually align with market sentiment, which is driven by many factors beyond just news tone. The words say one thing, the market does another. Also, effectively representing numerical time series data for a text-based LLM is still a challenge. You might lose information or introduce noise. Latency is another issue. Getting real-time decisions from current LLM prompting methods can be slow for trading. And maybe they miss connections between different stocks of just analyzing text sequentially. Yeah, capturing those cross-sectional relationships directly within the LLM framework is often less developed compared to specialized deep learning models like GNNs. Okay, finally, what about the limitations of LLM-based agents, the more autonomous systems? A key one is their quantitative reasoning ability. While great at language, LLMs often lag behind specialized deep learning models when it comes to pure numerical computation and reasoning needed for quant tasks. The numerical reasoning gap. Exactly. Also, research on using LLM agents for sophisticated multi-asset portfolio optimization and realistic order execution is still quite underdeveloped. What do you mean by underdeveloped? Well, current frameworks often use oversimplified risk constraints, ignore transaction costs, don't explicitly enforce diversification, and assume perfect liquidity during execution, which just isn't realistic. So they might look good in simulation, but wouldn't work well in the real messy market. That's a major concern. They lack the sophisticated risk management, cost awareness, and real-time adjustment mechanisms needed for practical trading. So summing up. Both deep learning and LLMs are pushing the boundaries in alpha strategies, offering powerful ways to process data and make predictions. Right, from deep learning's pattern recognition in complex data to LLM's potential for reasoning and integrating text. But significant challenges remain. Interpretability, overfitting, real-time performance, handling market frictions like costs and impact, and for LLMs, bridging that gap 
between language understanding and quantitative rigor. Absolutely. The potential is huge, but so are the hurdles to overcome for robust real-world application. It's not magic. There are serious limitations to consider. This has been a fantastic deep dive. It really highlights the sophistication, but also the practical challenges. And maybe leaves you, the listener, with something to think about. How will this ongoing evolution of AI reshape the roles of human analysts and portfolio managers? Where is that right balance between powerful automation and essential human oversight going to land? A crucial question, as these technologies become more embedded in financial markets. Lots to consider. 